Hi folks, in response to a question that had come up online, what I wanted to do is to share with you a recent video I made on the endosequence blend protocol that I made where I kind of explained this system and this technique briefly and go over the steps involved with making decisions. Now, this is a response to a question about working length, whether you make the measurement earlier or later. And I made a little video right before this video regarding that, but I figured this particular explanatory video that is coming up right after this, hopefully it would be helpful to you. All right. The endo sequence blend protocol was developed by Dr. Koch and I to provide a robust sequence of files for instrumentation involving files of different metallurgy and design and cutting characteristics, hence the name blend. Okay, so this system combines non-heat treated efficiently cutting endo sequence files with the heat treated highly flexible endo sequence scout files. The main idea revolves around the use of endo sequence files in the straighter coronal half of the root for efficient cutting, followed by using the thinner and more flexible endo sequence scout files in the apical half of the root where flexibility and safety is obviously the priority. So you first create flare in the coronal half of the root and then open up the apical half of the root and then blend the two together with the shape of a constant tapered endo sequence master file that can be obturated with a simple and efficient hydraulic condensation technique. So what's the algorithm? The algorithm or the sequence of views we develop for this system is very robust and it means that it allows for a variety of simple and complex cases to be addressed under the same umbrella with the main priority of using the least a number of files possible for any given canal. The idea starts by working a size 10 hand file to the apex and determining your working length. Of course, in molars and in very thin canals, this may require that you use some preliminary use of some orifice shapers to open up on top. Once working length is determined, however, with a size 10 hand file, use an endo sequence size 3004 as the starter file to gauge the canal diameter that you're dealing with. Now, two scenarios are possible under these conditions. If the size 30 goes all the way to the full working length right off the bat and within one or two rhythm motions, what you know is that you're dealing with a large canal. At that point, all you're going to do is determine what should be your master apical size, and that's the size that is going to have adequate engagement. Uh, so you move your way up until you achieve that length. Now, with some experience, you can jump straight to that appropriate size final master apical file and complete your preparations with that file. And of course, then you mash that with your matching endo sequence uh, BC cone and do hydraulic condensation and finish up your case. Now, in small canals, on the other hand, your size 30 will obviously not reach the apex within a couple of rhythm motions. This indicates that the canal space should be enlarged first with scout files before working the size 30 all the way to the apex. So you should drop down to a size 25 scout, which you can also use with one or two rhythm motions and then evaluate and see what you have. If at the apex already, then you move back up to a size 30 in order to finish. Now, but if you're not at the apex, which means that you kind of have a, even a smaller canal than a size 25, then you work your way down from a 20 to a 17 and even a 15 scout file are all available. Until the first file reaches the apex, as soon as the first file on the scouts reaches the apex, then you work your way back up until you get to a size 30 and that's your finishing file. The key, however, is to make sure that you do have an open path so you do need to recapitulate with your size 10 hand file in between each file to make sure that you've maintained the opening of the canal. So once your first scout file reaches the full working length, then you move back up in size until your size 30 has uh, reached the apex. And the key here is to make sure that you keep on irrigating and recapitulating along the process so you can keep it open. So keep in mind that you're using scout files to gradually enlarge the apex before your size 30 reaches the full working length. And of course, once the size 30 has reached the apex, then you can fill with your matching BC cone or with a one size smaller cone with hydraulic condensation technique, the same way you would do anything with the larger canals and the smaller canals, it's all the same way. The main goal here is the understanding of the rhythm motion, which is really a idea of using three light strokes to engagement, followed by the removal of the file from the canal, wiping it clean from debris, and then irrigating in the canal before engaging in another rhythm motion. The endosequence blend protocol is a robust sequence of files 
to use that allows you to divide canals into small and large canals and then use a combination of files to remove and clean the coronal half and then the apical half and then blend the two together. Combining this system with the EndoSync or EndoSync Plus handpieces set at 500 RPM and OTR torque value of about 0.2 to 0.6 newton centimeters makes this a very efficient and safe instrumentation system. Give this technique a shot and shoot me an email or drop me a comment with any questions or concerns that you may have on our website at rebuildendo.com or on social media around the internet. I hope that you enjoy this simple and robust instrumentation protocol.